And now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys. Tony, you look so nice and cozy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Where are so, you? If you want to tell people or don't tell people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I have my name in the Twitter handle, so they can just find whatever I do. On the <laughs> Where are you, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in uh, Romania, so it's, uh, it's a bit cold, as you can see. Yeah, I can see. That. Is it snowing? Or is there snow mm, in the ground? No, no, no. no, no. Not but yet. I'm also cold, and it's a funny story, and then I'll be fast, and then we'll get into it. So <laughs> I bought a pre-workout. Okay. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll try, you know, because uh, I've never tried this stuff before. And um, this is the second night with no sleep. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Zero. Why would wow. you do that? You do not need a pre-workout. I know. Man. It's. I know. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> no, you're, yeah, no. So I'm, I'm not taking that anymore. <laughs> It's what what is it? Just like a ton of caffeine? I mean, where's the uh um yeah, it's it's the equivalent of four Red Bulls. Oh my goodness, bro. Yeah, what so were you gonna do? What was your workout gonna be? You're gonna go climb the Himalayas? I mean, what were you gonna <laughs> <laughs> yes. that was because I don't drink coffee, I don't you know, so I didn't know. So he says 300 milligrams of caffeine, 350 of taurine, beta alanine. So I was like all right Jesus, man. wow go, go, go smoke easy. some weed go smoke some weed you gotta even I've, it out i don't smoke weed and i thought you know what maybe let's I do smoke. that yeah, <laughs> you yeah may have no. to. i need to <laughs> i need to like flush it out of my system first so oh, gee. all right, well, all right ho let's, hopefully uh... you don't pass out during the news hopefully it doesn't oh, just hit you all at once <laughs> No, but um, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, war on the bill. <laughs> All right, let's 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 take it away, it Tony. Yep. Go ahead, share your right, screen. Let's my friend. get into it. Um, all right, guys. Um, so if you're on Twitter Spaces, you can join us on on YouTube, so you can actually see uh, the visuals. Um, so before we start, everybody, hands up in a space, comment on YouTube. Let's get numbers up, okay? And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing that I want to mention is Bitcoin Magazine and how when there's something positive, I guess, for Bitcoin, they tend to just throw the word Bitcoin. And then if it's not positive anymore, they take it away. And this one, they said the EC ECB, which is the European Central Bank, chose Bitcoin's encryption standard for its CBDC prototype. It's not Bitcoin's. Bitcoin is using it, but it's not. Bitcoin, Bitcoins, right? It's shot 256. Um, so there's nothing much to this story specifically, but I just wanted to mention how funny it is that they just throw the mm. stuff. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, the, the, they love taking credit. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine, but it's, it's not Bitcoins, but you know, I just wanted to mention that. Um, but this this week has been crazy. We have a lot of bills. We have a lot of things uh, going on. And um, let's talk about probably the, the biggest thing, which is um, Warren's new um, digital assets, anti-money laundering bill. The proposal, it's it's crazy. Like it's it's crazy. So if I read and I'm going to be shocked, it's because I'm shocked every, every single time I read it. It's, it's insane. So the proposal will bring know your customer rules to crypto participants such as wallet providers and miners, right? And if we scroll down below, so Elizabeth Warren, uh, which refused to hop on the show, we tried. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, she's introducing a bill to crack down on money laundering and financing of terrorists and rogue nations via cryptocurrency. It's always, we've had, that, and we'll talk about it in a bit, um, There's uh, there's been the FTX collapse and other collapses, and they use this, as a very good excuse to protect us, right? And, right. and See, the thing is, it's not a good excuse, though. Like, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense. Like, this was FTX was fraud, right? And then mm -hmm. this is about uh, money laundering. Like, it's you know completely two unrelated things. Like, oh my God, FTX collapsed. We need to to save the world from fraud. So we're going to introduce a bill that takes away people's privacy when they use crypto. <laughs> like, how, how does that yeah. even be to solve the problem? Uh, exactly. Disgusting. And not only, because we'll talk about how they're going to do it to the euro as well and mm -hmm. the dollar eventually. So not, so not only that, um, 
someone said it should be know your banks and politicians. Ho oh, ho, no, actually, there's a new bill on that too. So stay tuned in a bit. Um, so if this becomes a law, um, the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act will bring in know your customer KYC rules to crypto participants such as wallet providers and miners and prohibit financial institutions from transacting with digital asset mixers, which are tools is designed to obscure the origin of, of funds. They really don't want you to have any privacy whatsoever. And we've talked we've talked about it in, in the last episode, how they don't want the digital euro to have uh, the anonymity of cash. They don't want that. Right. And, and in this scenario, they could even potentially categorize something like something like Monero as a mixer, right? So like you're not allowed to move from Bitcoin into into Monero to quote unquote wash your wash your coins. Yep, exactly. And I think uh, one article because I'd like free. Yeah, I mean, just... if, if this bill passed, crypto would <laughs> I mean, the, it, crypto would obviously survive, but the attack would be insane. I mean, uh, yeah. It's not going to happen. Um, I, I don't think. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't see there being the political will at all, like for for things to really start to move in this direction. But mm -hmm. really interesting that she's going for it. Um, really scary because really yeah. showing her cards, right? Mm -hmm. um, she's she's obviously in bed with the traditional banking system. Yeah, one hundred percent. And um, it also says that the act would also allow the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network to implement a proposed rule requiring institutions to report certain transactions involving unhosted wallets. That um, wallets where the user has complete control over the contents rather than relying on an exchange or other third party. So you are trying to protect us from FTX-like exchanges, but you are pushing us away from self-custody, which is protecting us from the thing that you are trying to protect us from it right? makes absolutely no sense it doesn't make sense and how would they even you know enforce this how would wallets even be able to do this right like you know how how would i mean basically they'd be saying something like a cake wallet would have to kyc aml their users yeah that yeah yeah i was thinking about vic actually when i was reading yeah. this article um yeah maybe so... uh, maybe somebody uh from cake will jump in later in the chat we could talk about mm -hmm. this uh, someone said in the comments, because I'm paying attention to the YouTube uh, comments as well. I wonder why they don't want us to have privacy, but they do have. Um, well, because they want uh, they they want control. Obviously, they're trying to they make no sense, sense, right? It doesn't make any sense. You're right. It doesn't make any sense. And then I have um, two more articles on this, um, and then we'll we'll skip ahead. Uh, but yeah, it requires devs to register identity and obtain a license, sensor, and surveil users' bans privacy tools. And so I'll just read this part. Identify and record the personal information of every person who uses their software or sends transactions over their internet-connected computers. Develop risk-calibrated cali AML programs that block persons from using their software or network for throughput if they suspect those people are moving funds related to crime. And file reports about their users without a warrant government requests or probable causes the trigger <laughs> it's, it's crazy yeah literally declaring war on on crypto on crypto and just uh, privacy in general and then on uh, privacy you know, which is you know a vital aspect of true crypto it's no long like yeah. crypto would be completely defanged if this bill were to pass and it were somehow implemented and you know uh these all these companies went along with it i mean the, and if people continue to use crypto in this fashion, it would no longer be crypto. It'd be Venmo. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, yeah. Essentially, Venmo on a large scale, if it's Bitcoin centralized, uh, and we'll talk about that also. Um, I think I have something on it. But yeah, um, what I have... I got to say, though, all bullish for Monero, right? Because this all yeah. like continues to awaken the masses and e even those in crypto that have been like the BTC maxis all along that are looking at this and realizing more and more that you need a robust form of crypto that is private on the protocol level and exactly. to have all the protections in place where it can survive a, a state attack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, um, I agree. So then let's see, Give me one second. Yeah, this is just um, not an article, more in depth 
of uh, what we talked. Um, but it also says, additionally, every FI, including traditional FIs like banks, custodial crypto FIs, and uh, these newly classified crypto infrastructures FIs would be banned from making any transactions involving pri privacy tools. And they did mention uh, preserving cryptocurrencies, Zcash, Monero, et cetera. Right. right. And all these things would be considered financial institutions is what they're saying. And they would have to abide by the banking rules. So yes, while it would be considered a financial institution. It's insane. It's insane. And all because uh, FTX, right? <laughs> It's thanks, crazy. Sam. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Well, thanks. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they were going to move in this direction anyway. So if it was FTX or something else. I mean, they're they're just looking for you know the the impetus to do it, right? The, the political will, the energy. Um, so if it wasn't FTX, it'd be something else. So let's, let's rip off that bandaid. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and then let's um, let's get into the the next thing. Um, Let's actually talk about Monero for a bit. And um, if you remember this guy, his name is uh, Fiat Jaff. And uh, he basically wanted to um, to get money for someone to attack, <laughs> to fund attacks against Ethereum and, and Monero, uh, which was really funny at the time. And then he yeah, his reasoning was like, if, if we can knock Monero out, then maybe Litecoin adoption would grow on the dark markets is basically what his reasoning was like, cause people actually use Monero. Uh, so we basically need to, you know, knock it out, get rid of it. And then that will help Bitcoin grow. Uh, pretty funny. Um, yeah. To ensure I mean, Bitcoin success. <laughs> talk about a, you know, uh, you know, a compliment, right? There's no greater yes. form of compliment in crypto than to say you want to, uh, basically attack and get rid of another project because it's you know taking away your market share exactly but it's kind of like nikola tesla because he said that he's not mad of the other people that stole his ideas or things like that he's just sad that they don't have or originality right and you know if he attacked it and it worked well shit man then Monero. great <laughs> you know then we, we need something else like thank you you proved like right yeah yeah <laughs> Go for it, man. Yeah, exactly. Her investing in, you know, Monero research. Exactly. Um, but he wrote this letter like, good morning, I tend to blah, blah, perform more experiments and attacks. <laughs> that will ultimately cost a little bit of money. <laughs> and, um, and then essentially Jack donated money, not towards this, of course, but Fiat Jeff, um, um, I think he's the main developer, or I'm not sure, uh, behind. N-O-S-T-R, Nostra. Um, yeah, what is just, that? Uh, what, what is Nostra? Do you know? It's a decentralized social network, um, okay. essentially. And um, I'm, I'll get into more details. But Jack Dorsey didn't donate um, for him to attack Monero. He just donated, donated to, to uh, this uh, decentralized social network, which aims... Well, he, yeah, he donated to this guy who's working, at, who's the main dev, I guess, for Nostra, right? Uh, I to the front. I assume so. Yeah, it stands for uh, notes and other stuff. It, it is it. pretty interesting though that there's this connection there, right, between Dorsey and now supporting a guy who blatantly wanted yeah. to attack Monero. Yeah, that, I'm not that sad. I mean, I doubt Dorsey was aware of the connection. Who knows? It was kind of funny because I had tweeted the day before when he made yeah, the he announcement did. that he was going to put out grants. I was like, oh, donate to the Monero project. <laughs> you did. <laughs> they literally did the exact opposite. I would donate to the guy <laughs> trying to take out the Monero project. <laughs> <It's pretty wild. laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's Maybe it's a bit revealing about Jack Dorsey, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. He's really busy, so I would be surprised, but who knows? Um, yeah, who knows? But essentially, he donated money to this open protocol that aims to create a censorship-resistant global social network. Um, so, yeah, interesting. I don't know. So Jack Dorsey is giving out money. Uh, but yeah, Jack, please, like, donate to Monero. Yeah, let, let me yeah. give money to build something that doesn't exist in any, like yet that's pie in the sky as opposed to just tweeting something positive about Monero. <laughs> It'd be yeah. more, it's so much more impactful than the 14 BTC you just donated to this project. All you have to yeah. do is not even talk, just talk openly about Monero. Discuss it. Come discuss yeah. it. 
Twitter. Exactly. And talk about it as this, you know, you're 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 such a believer in these, you know, these new forms of censorship resistant decentralized tech. Here's Monero. Just come talk about it. You'll have an exactly. amazing positive impact on the ecosystem. Exactly. Oh, check this out. He put hashtag Nostra in his description. Well, he's he's sold. <laughs> All right. Whatever this thing is. Yeah. Um, so hopefully one day, I, I think it's important because given his position and he's obviously interested in in, uh, in Bitcoin and you know censorship resistance. If you're so interested, why don't you talk about one of the best tools? Like make it. But I don't know. Um, what I do want to talk about over quick is SBF and the fact that <laughs> the day before he was going to testify in Congress, they just arrested him. Yeah, um, crazy timing. It's crazy. Um, so let's see. Before he was arrested Monday in the Bahamas, a disgraced, a disgraced <laughs> FTX founder and former CEO Sam Bankman Freed was planning to testify before Congress on Tuesday about the dramatic collapse of his cryptocurrency um, exchange. Um, they've actually published the crypto uh, Sam's planned testimony as much as his much anticipated congressional appearance is now unlikely. And um, Bankman is reportedly being held in custody, awaiting likely ext extradition to the US, where he is expected to face criminal charges. And if we are to look in the testimony, I think it's um, kind of hilarious. <clears throat> Can you just imagine him saying that in, in Congress? I would like to start by formally stating under oath, I fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, I know. <laughs> How can you say that? Like in front of Congress, you know? <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> I know that it doesn't mean much. Him, like, I feel like part of like, I feel like this guy really does, <laughs> just doesn't give a shit. Like he really thinks like ultimately he's going to some get away get away with it to some degree. He's going to go to jail, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. I don't think so. But I mean, look what like, they did to Ross, man. I know. That's they, pretty depressing. Double yeah. life sentence, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, FTX, uh, he's not going to get anything anything like that. No, uh, so. no. And and he just doesn't really, he just, he, he knows. He knows he's going to kind of like get away with it. <laughs> I'm like, but yeah. it's, how can you open like that? You know, like. You might say my honor, you know, blah blah blah, and then ultimately you say sorry. Not I fucked up. <laughs> okay. Fuck up. <laughs> I mean, his whole whole strategy is to make it seem like he was not willful at all, and it was just purely negligence. Yes. And, you know, hopefully. like honestly, might as well start with the uh, one and then dot what. <laughs> mm. You know, like he posted on Twitter. Um, but yeah, so. Um, I don't want to get much into into SPF. Um, he's not going to get uh, what he deserves. So uh, let's let's move on. Um, and just we, we're halfway through almost. Uh, the rest are kind of going to go fast through them. Uh, but if you guys know more things about these topics, hop on Twitter spaces after and uh, let's discuss it because obviously it's difficult for me to know, um, you know, pristine details about every single thing. And I also want to thank everybody that sends me uh, news. I really appreciate it because people tag me now. And they say, "Oh, we should talk about this and that." And uh, awesome, nice. Makes it easier in case. Uh, yeah. So keep it up, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, people. 